Hi, it's uh, Ricky of Mosh for Times here once again. Now, tonight we're doing something completely different, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we do have a serious subject to talk about tonight, and uh, it will not be my usual taking the mickey out of band members. Tonight we've got Matt and Ben from the Scottish branch, or some of the Scottish branch of the charity Heavy Metal Therapy. So how the devil are you guys? And uh, yeah, it's absolutely fantastic to meet you. It's good to yeah. be here, Ricky. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank, thanks so much. Thanks for giving us an opportunity to kind of you know tell some stories and take some questions. It's obviously something that's quite close to our heart, um, yeah. and, and we love talking about it, mate. And that's that's ultimately what the whole thing's about. So, well, I love talking about it as well because what you don't know is I've actually got a diploma in CBT. So uh, mental health is actually quite a um, a big topic for me. Um, it's a, a career I wish I pursued counselling, but you know it's with the cost of living and everything like that. But anyway, I digress, we'll go into that. But I'm going to start with a really simple question then. What is mental health? How important is it? And how did you come uh, to become involved with heavy metal therapy? That's a few, mate. I know, like, that's, that's a lot, I remember. There's um, yeah, yeah, so, me, are you? I, 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 suppose, um, I suppose mental health is, is that sort of continuum of, of whether, how good you feel within yourself, how connected you do feel to other people, how secure you feel, as well as all those other symptoms, which you'll find in sort of books like the DSM-5 and ICD-10, or the medical side. So it's not just the medical side of it itself. It's not just having like depression, anxiety, yeah. psychosis. It's also like how you are feeling connected to you and all those parts around. Um, it's incredibly important, mate. It is really incredibly important. If you, if you kind of look back, it's an absolute foundation to how successful you are kind of as a person, how well you connect with the people around you, how well you kind of do jobs and education. Um, and if, if you sort of, you know, it's, it's literally a disability for a lot of people when yeah, you can't get absolutely. out there and do the things that mean something to you, because what is the point? And let's, let's face it, like the, the worst mental health, it makes you feel not like you. You know, it makes you feel not like yourself. Um, you break it all down. And, and that can be absolutely horrific. And, you know, I, especially things like depression, I always think like if, if you if you if you break a leg, I know that's an often used like um, sort of example. If you break a leg, you know how that's going to heal, don't you? You yeah. have mental health. The real killer here is you don't think it is going to heal, mm -hmm. and that's the thing that really does people that sense of permanency, that sense of things never getting better. That is the the real killer in in like the, the kind of literal way. So I think mental health is incredibly important. And the more and more research kind of ties it in with physical health, and then physical health in with mental health. Um, we start to realise, you know, putting whole like your social sort of like health as well. You've got like yeah. three foundations, like a, a strong tripod, if you like, of of kind of how strong you feel. So um, yeah, what do we do? Well. Well, Matt, Matt, I don't know how the hell you can talk that. I think he actually knows what he's talking <laughs> about, this boy. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll bring you into it um, by asking, how did you become involved with heavy metal therapy? You've probably been asked this 101 times, and then I'll come back to you, Ben, with that very same question. So how did you become involved with heavy metal therapy then? Well, it was funny enough by complete mistake. It was I started blogging about a year or two years ago, and I was going to write about my struggles with mental health and how I overcame that and my journey with mental health. So I reached out to a page called a meme page I thought it was called Heavy Metal Therapy and then asked them to make a playlist for me. And then it ended up I wrote something for them that a week later I was on their website and it sort of snowballed from there. But it's uh So it's like you re this. you review an album, isn't it? It's like that, but you're talking about a lot of things personal. Is, is some feeling seeing something on a website, something that's published on a website? Um, it must have been a wee bit of a proud moment, but also maybe a wee bit harrowing reading what you'd written. Oh, absolutely, because I was thinking, uh, I was doubting myself a lot. I'd never really seen my name published on anything apart from my own blog, which I kind of published stuff and then let it go and people feedback, people feedback, but it was... Yeah. interesting to have it sent out and have a website think that something I wrote was worthwhile to publish on their platform which was incredibly flattering and then it's yeah. found came into this friendship where I'm friends with Ben and the other founders which is really fun No, absolutely cool thanks very much for that Matt uh, what about your, yourself Ben, how did you become involved? I, I kind of came behold, uh, involved at about the same time I sort of started revisiting metal. Um, I spent a lot of time quite disconnected from disconnected from the music and from 
um, the culture. And that was, that was through a lot of um, kind of life changes that I had. And my own mental health was just awful for um, a lot of my 30s. You tend to do a lot less. So I, I kind of lost the connection with gigs, with, with community. I moved city as well. Um, and I got divorced, actually, and um, was started listening to kind of metal. Like my, my way of processing, again, like what was happening is I'd, I'd go for a, for a drive and play like 36 Crazy Fist or something like that. Really, really freaking loud. Um, and That's not loud, by the way. That's not loud. loud. Oh, yeah. So <laughs> that's not heavy, but um, so yeah, yeah. And then I I came across the web page as well, and kind of like like kicked myself because actually turns out the people who were, who were running it, I sort of said, "Do you want me to write something about my experience as a kid?" Because I was I was I was a bit very nuts as a kid. I've been very nuts a lot of my life, um, and about how metal really helped me. Um, probably kept me out of some serious trouble. Yeah, you know, going going to the clubs, I had serious anger problems, mate. Um, and and you know like mosh pits and laughs and screams and the community and you know um like really kind of help ground me help keep me like in, in within myself um like the first time i've heard slipknot was just like a massive dose of antipsychotics it was fantastic um so yeah i had to do a, a, an article and carried on doing articles um and eventually they sort of said do you want to help us like found this community interest company like, mm-hmm. um and it's kind of weird because it turns out um i actually know some of the co-founders um okay. well I, I, we we i'm an ex-mental health nurse um ex cbt therapist as well actually um and uh it turns out we'd all worked in the same areas we sort of knew each other like one of them like kate's like friends with two of my friends and it just seemed like it, i don't know the, the links kind of formed then and yeah I, I felt part of the community again I, I felt like accepted and honest to god like ricky i i, I do this because i i get a, a kick out of it i i feel like i belong when i'm doing it so that's 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 why mate it's funny though like um you think you're the only one in the world thinking these thoughts or having those feelings like when matt when you're writing your blog nobody else is feeling like this but when you actually talk to other people there's plenty of them there's plenty of people that you can talk to. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So thanks very much. Um, so, what services or other charities have you partnered with uh, where you can outsource people who uh, they can contact and go to? Now, I know that this is a Scottish branch. I don't know if you want to uh, name a couple of particular Scottish charities or companies that people can go to, or certainly mention like UK ones. What other charities? Over, over to you, Matt. You're getting to know your patch really well, mate. He's, 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 this guy is stomping. So because of the heavy metal therapy and some of the different things that they've given me the opportunity to do, I've started volunteering with a charity called My Black Dog, and that's online peer-to-peer support. It's, it's volunteers that have got their own problems with mental health. And you can go on and connect with one of the volunteers. It's all anonymous, and that was... Cool. Uh, so with working with My Black Dog, it's an online charity. And it's all online peer-to-peer support. So you come to the website, you give a brief reason why you're there, and you get connected to one of the volunteers. And it's something that Kate in particular pushed me towards uh, because I, she kind of knows that I like helping people and I've got my own different struggles and things and yeah. that I wanted to give back and I didn't want anyone to feel the way I did and if I could help someone else to shine a light then I wanted to be able to do that and this has given me the opportunity to do that meanwhile learning from the supervisors that are on shift and because they are professionals in their field as well and they can they're watching what you're saying and can give you feedback so you've said that well you could have said this differently you could perhaps try and explore it this way so it's getting to learn how to have different conversations that I've never had before. So it's an incredibly humbling experience getting to help people because I get a lot from it. Even if I go on and, and I feel pretty down, I usually after it, if I've been able to help someone, I feel so much better because I think I've sent them away and I've given them a bit of hope or a bit of light in the dark, which really just fills my cup and I love it. No, fair play to you, Matt, fair play to you. How much of your time, your own time, do you take with this charity, for example? So you come up one evening a week and you can they send that thing out every week saying this this morning or this afternoon or night needs some more people so you can volunteer to do a bit more. So it's one evening a week, really. 
but you can do more if you want to help out. So it's really flexible that way. They're really good if you have something on. Like I go to a lot of gigs, so if I'm going to a gig and I want to swap a different day, they're really fine with that. So it's a really flexible thing where they want to look after you as well. So it's a really, it's a fantastic community to be a part of, and I'm incredibly grateful to have been accepted by them because it's something I'm I'm learning a lot from and I'm just really enjoying it. No, great stuff. What's the charity called again? It's called My Black Dog. There you go. There you go, ladies and gentlemen. If you ever feel the need, there's a good testimonial from Matt for you. Um, so go and check them out in all the, the socials, I'm sure. But Ben, do you have a, a similar story? Is there a charity that you work closely with? Yeah, um, there's there's been a few we've kind of done stuff with. Um, Metal for Good, fantastic. They do a lot of fundraising and helping with charities, which is similar to ours. Um, we've got Sophie Lancaster Foundation, absolutely yeah. beautiful people. They've been fantastic. We've we've often um, worked to uh, we've generally worked Primordial Radio Festival, the AGM. Yeah, and they 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 generally sort of accepted us. They they even nominated us for an anti hate award. Um, which we which won, which was like completely Excellent. out of the blue. It was it was really nice. It was we did a piece of work um, called Somewhere I Belong, um, and I'll link and part drop there, um, where we did a gig guide for people, um, for venues and for people. So uh, we had people coming coming from LGBTQ uh, plus people coming from mental health, people coming from sort of social deprivation, um, sort of in different areas of so vulnerable people who were talking about their experiences of gigs and what people can do. It's fantastic. I'm trying to remain, I'll stop. Um, another one, I mean, a really cool one that me and uh, Matt did together was uh, All the Black Sheep, wasn't it, mate? That was that was an yeah, that was a dream. We, there's, we a, there's, a, there's a bit of a funny story attached to that actually. Oh, you're that, gonna that have was... to tell it now. You're gonna have to tell yeah. it. <laughs> that oh, was... well, I, I had sort of I'd said to Kate, I'll do Bloodstock next year because I thought mm -hmm. I'll be more ready to do it. And then I was talking to Ben about it, and the wires got a bit crossed. And yeah. now because I thought I can't not do it because if I'm asked. I would just kick myself. So I was absolutely. I'd never, I've never, never been to a music derby to go with the order of the black sheep who we were working alongside. Who are absolutely fantastic at what they do. Incredibly grateful that they let me have the opportunity to go, go along and work with them. Yeah, and it was as as terrified as I was to go and do it. They just welcomed all of us with open arms. The shifts were getting to help people at the festival was fantastic. Yeah. It's even when we were there, I remember quite a few times I thought going and seeing the bands would be the highlight. And it wasn't being on shift for me was the highlight, getting to talk to people, help people out, and send people away better than when they came to us, which was just a very humbling and kind of growing yeah. experience for me because I'd never done anything like that before just thrown in at the deep end and I absolutely loved it. Made some friends for life, I think. And I think if the opportunity ever comes up again, it's something that I'd definitely explore because I, I got a lot from it and I feel like I grew, I grew a lot from it as well. Yeah. Do you know, Ben, he's like a vocalist for a band. I asked him one question and he's answered my next six. Yeah, I was going to ask you about Bloodstock, but I'll keep that for, late, for later on. Mm. Um but it's definitely vitally important to get the person you're interviewing to open up about their stories. Um, I've seen that on your YouTube channel and everything. Like, So firstly, how do you get the people to interview? And uh, secondly, do you find the person that you're interviewing feel safe and comfortable to talk about their own personal experiences? Yeah, so i put this in the right order. So you can apply through the website or you can just uh, contact us uh, through on the Facebook site. Uh, there's there's a few of us will monitor sort of the messages as they come in. If you want to tell the story, it's fine. I think if you do approach us, you're ready to tell the story. That's absolutely fine. Yeah. Um, I've, I've never had anyone actually say, once their truth has come out, and this, this is the really great thing about blogging, vlogging, about getting it out there is it, yeah, it feels uncomfortable to do, but once it's out there, it kind of feels really good. It's almost like a confession, yeah. you know? Um, so I, I, I really, we've never had anyone who's been really uncomfortable because they, they've generally been at the point they could do. Um, and I think it's important that that's the thing, guys, you know, 
recovery is a long, long, long road, and you've got to be at the right point to be doing stuff like this. We, we've never wanted anyone to like do themselves any harm or some so further. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can just contact us and, and sort of, um, yeah. We're, we're happy Isn't to that amazing? Like I used to volunteer for Crisis, which is just based underneath the Erskine Bridge, and um, strangers just come in, and I'm just sitting there, and they will just talk to you about anything. They'll tell you their feelings, their thoughts, and everything because they see you as completely non-judgmental. Um, I could hardly say a word in a, a counselling session. I could just be like a brick wall and the person just vents. Um, but that's what they need. Uh, they just need to. Um, and the relief that they get from finally saying it, um, it's absolutely unbelievable how you can find that you can talk to strangers that you think you might not be able to talk to your best friend about or your parents about. It's absolutely scary. It's it's phenomenal. Well, it's and, and... Funny you should mention that, Ricky. It's something else that I recently ended up getting involved in because my mental health got quite bad. It's uh, Andy's Man Club, and I go there every Monday now. And it's, for some reason, I feel it a lot more easy to open up in a room full of men that I'd never met before than people I've known all my life. I don't know yeah. why that is. I don't know what, what it is about it, but it's just something about the whole experience is it just all of a sudden comes out. And it's not just being able to share your story. It's sometimes hearing other people's stories. Yeah, and It's just incredibly inspiring to hear all of these men from completely different backgrounds all just come for that, to do the same thing, to share and get a bit of support. It's just incredibly inspiring and humbling to be a part of these things because it's just sometimes taking a step back and realizing I'm I'm contributing to something that is bigger than myself right now. Yeah. And it's just it's amazing to be a part of these different things right now. Yeah. Yeah. No, absolutely. Um no thanks very much for that guys and being so open about that. Um but talking about your website, uh, what I really liked about your website and uh, the website is www.heavymetaltherapy.co.uk um is that you've pretty much listed all the mental illnesses that there is. Um you've then linked stories from real people or you've um, attached like resources that people can look at um and certainly more information. Um but what other things can people find out if they go to that uh, website? What can they use it for? There's, I mean, there's, there's, I, I love the stories. I feel like um, I feel like a Viking scald. You know, you're collecting <laughs> all these stories from all these warriors who've gone through these battles. Um, yeah, so definitely have a look at those. We've got the playlists, which are really good. Because let, let's let's face it. I mean, we we're not the therapists. The the music, the community, the heavy metal is the therapy. Yeah. Um, so we, we've got the music, we've got music for different playlists for different sort of diagnoses, different problems. So we've got like a, a PTSD one, psychosis one. Uh, we've got a Oh, that was incredible, one. by the way. I looked at that and the attachments that, with it, that went with it, the PDF. I yeah. thought that was incredible. All of it is is people have contributed. Um, one of one of our guys, um, one of our other volunteers, has been sort of like bringing them all together and adding stuff in, himself. And it's, we, we've got some really great people who've got like yeah. phenomenal taste in music. And that's the other thing I love about this is because I'm like 41 now, I ain't cool. I never was cool, but I get to hear all these different bands. Wait a minute, I'm, I'm 50. So what are you trying to say? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're thinking a whole cool me, mate. <laughs> um, yeah, but but there's um, we've we've got other things. I mean, we've got the the somewhere I belong um, doc document, um, which is a living document with stories from other people, the ones talking about with the gigs and, and stuff like that. Um, we've got the stories. Um, yeah, uh, I'm trying to think. A place in my head as well was kind of like yeah, different people, different things people in. Um, we've also got some. Um, resources which sort of take like common problems we try not to medicalize things so there's there's, yeah. there's there are ones which are considered medical so like depression anxiety but also things like rage things like abandonment we have a, a really big following i think this is this is a very metal thing of of um sort of people with, with, with sort of adhd with asperger's with autism we, we've got a, a lot of contributors from there which is really wonderful because we've got a lot of stuff for that as well because yeah. I, I do i do feel it, it metal the genre does seem to take a lot of people who are kind of outsiders aren't, aren't they the ones who yes. are not quite dance into the same step as everyone else <laughs> uh so you you know we we, we love our weirdos um so yeah, and, and what we are kind of looking at doing at the moment, which will be coming up on the website soon, is we're doing a pilot scheme for a support group, which is us doing the support group, which is n nothing we've ever done. We've done four years. We never actually wanted to do support groups, but we're like, yeah, there's been enough of a need for it and enough people have asked us. 
So we're going to start putting there. Big thing is, guys, like me and Matt have been banging on about, volunteering is really good for you. It is really good for your yeah. mental health. You, you feel part of something. You feel bigger than yourself, like Matt was saying. We will take contributions from you guys. Like one of the best things you can take from our website is is the the, the stories and, and the love and, and you know, your your truths which you give to us. Because someone else is going to find it useful. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thanks, Ben. What about yourself, Matt? Is there a particular aspect of the website that you found useful or in your own personal experience or is there anything else about the website that you'd like to talk about? I think one of my favourite things about the website is we've got the resources created by people from the community about ADHD, anxiety, all sorts of different illnesses and generalised mental health problems that you can go on. And it's just it's not a lot of reading. It's a brief thing you read. It's got what helps the person that made the resource for us. It's got some songs to do with that. And it's so, I think it's it's small. You can carry them about. We've, we've got them at the stalls that we have, wherever we might be. And it's I think stuff like that for me, because it's bite-sized, but it's got a lot of useful stuff in it. Because this isn't this isn't opening up an article and it's someone telling you go for a walk. This is someone with lived experience of that thing, giving their story to heavy metal therapy and putting themselves on and on that page, which yeah. I think is incredible that we yeah. are able to facilitate that. Like I last year that was one of the things before I got more involved as I was involved in creating the anxiety resource and it was incredible that on the phone call that I thought that I didn't know were going to come up came up and I thought I, I felt as if we'd made a really good resource that I hope helps someone else because it's it's lived an experience of I think sometimes it's quite you get people with using big words that they sort of you normal people can't re relate to whereas I think ours is real people lived in people giving their story saying this is what's happened this is what works for me and it's I love that part of the website because it's yeah it's all people from all across the country. Like even as Ben was saying, it's the community aspect. Ben's in Norwich and I'm in Glasgow. We would never have met otherwise from this. And earlier on this year, Ben came up to Edinburgh to go and see Bloodywood. Oh, how and good were they, man? It was it was beautiful. It's, wasn't it? <laughs> it's stuff like that blows my mind that yeah. I've got friends across the country now because of this that I would never have met. Yeah, and it's that side of it where it's. It's a lot bigger than any of us because it unites people, shows us people they're not alone. And it's just incredible to be a part of this growing thing because it's only going to get bigger. You just, from what we talked about earlier, and you just said it, uh, when people are reading other real people's stories and testimonials and stuff like that, they're saying, oh, that's how I was thinking. Oh, wait a minute, they're feeling that as well. Then they realise that they're not alone. Um, because that's what people think that when something's happened to them, nobody else has felt like this or thinking like this. But when they actually see it right in front of them, oh wait a minute! Um, so human human misery is is weirdly universal, but people don't yeah think think it is. And the, and the trick people do is like my problems aren't as bad as their problems, so no one should have to sort me out. I'll be fine. No, no, no. Whatever you're going through is awful because you're going through it. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's it's worse than everyone else's because yeah. it's you. It's happening yeah. to you. So that's why we yeah. don't go and seek out prop, like help. And, and <laughs> hearing that story, you're right, Ricky. Hearing that story makes people think, oh, it's just not not just me. <laughs> yeah, I'm allowed to. I've got the permission. Absolutely. To seek help to do what I need to do. Absolutely. But um, thanks, guys. So, how important do you think music and specifically heavy metal is as one of the best coping strategies when somebody's got issues with anxiety or depression or um. Yeah, suicidal thoughts or anything like that. I I think it's phenomenal. I think it's I, I I remember being at a point like in in my like as a teenager and just feeling like constantly my entire body was vibrating with rage, um, you know, and and self loathing and someone just like popping headphones on me and playing Slipknot and it just it was it was just like everything was turned down as the music was turned up, everything else was turned <laughs> down. It, it was it was amazing. It really was. Um, I, I think there's many aspects to that. I think the music itself is is very, it can be very uh, upbeat, very aggressive, and that can't match how you feel or how you want to feel. And I think um, I, I this is not an example often used. 
um you know heavy metal has very brutal lyrics and yeah. there's, a, there's, a, there's a real honesty to it you know if you, if you think about it um you know i think the same the same years like i use this nearly christmas the example i kind of give is mary carey got a, a number one with all i want for christmas is you she's coming you can't run um at the same year that corn brought their first album out i'm a new metal fan um you know they went platinum they went platinum with 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 lyrics about horrendous things that happened in childhood about depression self-harm um that's amazing. I, I don't think you'd get away with that in a lot of music genres. You know, we, we've got brothers and sisters in hip hop and other organizations similar to ours. They're similar punk the like, but there is a certain like brutalness to to metal. Yeah. There's an honesty to it that, you know, it's it's human. It's that's why we love it. I like it. Thanks, Ben. What about yourself, Matt? Like how important do you think it is? <clears throat> Music's just, uh, I think, uh, it's, I, I don't like that cliche, music's going to save the world, but I mean, when you go to a gig, everyone's there for the same reason, they're there to see a band, they're there to go and watch perhaps their favourite band for the first time, or maybe the hundredth thing, There's, it brings people from all different places, and it's something that I think me, me, Ben, and all of the people at Heavy Metal Therapy have noticed, that you will find metalheads in the weirdest of places, you would never expect them. And you sort of double take and you think, you know, you'll see them with a Slipknot t-shirt or something, and you, 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 you won't even have to exchange words, you just have that look with each other, you're like, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's actually literally how this whole thing started, it was two people it's, working together, and one of them was a slip, and the Slipknot shoddy, and they went, let's be friends forever. <laughs> <laughs> I wish uh, you could have chosen a better band, to be fair. <laughs> um, um, but yes, I will be going to the 25th the anniversary tour, give you that. <laughs> well, be going... lead, lead from within or supporting them if that's, that's a yeah. good reason to go absolutely absolutely they did turn me down for an interview but that's beside the point it wasn't actually the band it was the record company but I'm not angry about that at all now that's fine I'm better than them so um, but isn't it strange how when heavy metal first came out a few decades ago it was regarded as noise um, it was regarded as satanic I mean I remember I mean, I'm death metal, and I remember like this member being taken to court because of uh, the cover art and the lyrics were indecent and obscene. Um, to the extent that this member won the case, and they now called their second album "Indecent and Obscene," and it sold millions. But now heavy metal is an everyday thing, and it's more popular than it's ever been. It's more accepted now. Um, I just find it as a genre of music where you can talk about your fallen ones or you can talk about, you can have a ballad and talk, uh, sing about your loved ones or who don't love you, but you can also talk about death metal, chopping people in half and getting eaten by zombies and stuff like that. Um, I can't think of another genre of music where you've got that freedom to write your lyrics. Yeah. And it's, it's, I think there's, there's, it's not always very serious metal. I, I kind of love that about it. It's, it is sort of yeah. serious, but there is there's certain like um, ridiculousness to it that that's almost like fun and playful, isn't it? Even death metal can be incredibly play, playful. Because um, let's face it, death death metal is kind of like jazz, isn't it? It's it's very lush. Kind of let, let, let's see what we can do. I don't let's like them, Matt. I don't like them. No, no, <laughs> lull, lull, lull the audience <laughs> into it and then change something else. Um, so yeah, it, it, it is. It is like. It's something, yeah. You can get away with. You can get away with murder <laughs> in yeah. metal. Can you? you can get you can get away with a lot of stuff. And and, yeah. and in, in that in that way, you're right, Ricky. It's a very diverse genre. Once you get past your initial, oh my god, this is loud. <laughs> <laughs> I read uh, that, I read on your website. Was it you, Matt, that actually said this? Um, your mother said to you that this music sounds so depressing, but you said that. Um, I'm listening to the music to get rid of the depression. I think that was Swamp Coffin then, wasn't that's it? That's right. That's who it was. It yeah. was. Yeah. Um, do metal lads who do tunes that sound like the end of the world. Uh, <laughs> but, but yeah. Yeah. No, they, absolutely great. Absolutely great. Um, that's great. Thanks a lot for that, guys. 
Um, but also, once people start talking, um, it's so important for people to remember the successes that they've had in their lives for when there are times that they think they can't do it again. Um, they have to remember their successes. But can you give an example of what you uh, deem to have been a success from people that have maybe interacted with yourself and with the group? Um, obviously, you're not going to name names or anything like that, but can you think of an example where there will always be somebody that you'll remember? I, oh, I'm i thinking some, some of my best ones are like face-to-face -face was Bloodstock was really nice. Yeah. Um, when we worked, worked alongside, we, we, can't, we can't do consultancy, didn't we, for all the black sheep? They wanted some mental health specialists. Um, I, I ended up talking to two men who were very, very drunk, but very morosely drunk, quite suicidal. Yeah. And both of them came back either the next day or the day after um, to like apologize. And then we had another session where I was just like, don't apologize. Yeah. <laughs> just say exactly what you said to me, to other people, to, to the people who care about you, because I'm a stranger. And um, that was, that was really, that was really, really wonderful. They was like, I, I got to see two breakthrough moments of, of two people at the most vulnerable and um, they didn't know me. They didn't met me before in my life. Um, it's just you know, like if that if that was, still wasn't there, what would have happened to those two individuals? I I I don't know. Yeah, I I really don't know. Um, and it's frightening. There's like a hundred bands for them to see, but yet they went to stall. Talked about mental health, their issues, their problems, and stuff like that. Is I've I've been there. So I, remember, I remember watching like Rage Against the Machine. Um, like 2012, and I'm like, at the time, it was one of my favourite bands, and I should be enjoying this, but I was, I was really struggling with my mental health, and I just got hit by this like wave of of like what was happening to me at the time. Yeah, and just it, it, it totally killed it for me. It to totally like ruined it for me. I was I was lucky enough to to sort of be with a, with a partner at the time who could see. She she knew when I started to go because I I just like stand there and my, my eyes would like twitch to the right, and she'd be just like. You need to chat. Um, so I was I was lucky to have people around me who who could recognise that within me, who recognise the sort of changes, uh, and, and these people didn't really. Yeah. Um, so I, I get that, and and I'm sure like a lot of people would have that situation where you're watching the band, you should be enjoying it, but other things that happen around you are getting in the way of that. Um, and let's face it, we're here for the music, aren't we? <laughs> that's that's all we <laughs> love. So yeah, um, that that for that for me was 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 a real good one, and you know Matt, of course, you know. <laughs> yeah, of course, you have that back here too. Yeah, so so Matt, what was a um, a personal highlight for yourself, like somebody that you'll always remember, or somebody you'll always use an example to to others? Well, I think one that springs to mind is again from Bloodstock, and it was my first shift in the welfare. And I was bricking it. I was nervous. I couldn't. I was just didn't know what to do. I felt so far from home. And thought, what have I done? And then because we get to wear the heavy metal therapy t-shirts, somebody came in looking for heavy metal therapy, and getting to talk to them and see their faces light up because they communicated to someone from us online. Yeah, and then coming in and talking to me and saying, "Oh, what you do is great. It's great. We, we, it's great to see you. We, we came down to see you." And it was obviously they didn't come down to see specifically me. It could have been Ben. It could have been Kate. It could have been one of the other ones from that were, were there. But it was me, and I was incredibly grateful for that interaction because that was a, I was in up my head was in the game. I was out of my shell, and I could sort of sort of wear that mask and be that person that was required at that time. And I'm, yeah. it sort of hammered home how big this thing is because I think so, because we're all in different parts of the country and we don't get to see each other often aside from if we're writing stuff or collaborating. And obviously we've all got lives. Ben's got a child. I've got, I'm working full time and we're all busy. So life goes on until you see each other again. It's getting to see the impact that somebody's the organisations from because obviously I just volunteer some of my time for it because it's a cause I care a lot about. I yeah. care a lot about heavy metal therapy. I have gotten a lot from this. Yeah. And for someone to come in and just to see their face light up, it was really, really humbling. So I thought I'm really part of something that's 
bigger than myself right now and it sort of set me up for the whole weekend where I ended up having a great time and it's one of the best experiences of my life and I'm incredibly grateful to I can embarrass Ben a bit here I'm actually I thought I would hate him for it but I'm incredibly grateful to Ben for having that miscommunication of where it ended up I was put in the position to go there because if I hadn't went there's things that wouldn't have happened that have happened as a snowball effect of that. So I'm incredibly grateful for that experience and that they took a chance on me. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can relate to that in a, a lot of ways. Like, I was always scared about doing face-to-face interviews. Like, I, I got used to doing online interviews, but I went down to a festival in Manchester and was like, there's no way I can do this, no way I can do this. And then a band member just came up and said, right, I'm ready for an interview. Mark gave me a microphone and five to ten minutes later was done. I'm right, who's next? You know, and I can almost see you getting up on the stage at Bloodstock saying, right, who's ready to talk next? Come over to that <laughs> I'm over there. I'd, I'd love to do that. <laughs> I'm a massive narcissist. Um, but yeah, you just I mean, know that some people are just there at the right time at the right place, and that just yeah. once that person there that said that they'd been to heavy metal therapy before, that was you, you were in the zone. You, you, you settled your nerves. I think honourable mention goes to anyone who's been on, because this is a slight plug as well, Ricky. Um, so we, we do our sort of radio podcast, which is a church heavy metal therapy. We're all Sons of Anarchy fans. Um, and we've done a lot of interviews there and people sharing their stories has just been absolutely fantastic. We had, we had two two lads who were talking about having ADHD and they they had it together at the age of like 22. They had life sorted with, yeah. with like this, this, what anyone else would call this deregulation but they they worked around it. They they ate around ate around the edges, and they made their lives work with with like the, their their own hyper focus and with things like that. And hearing people so young figuring it out um, when to be honest, it's taken me to like the age of thirty five to start to get it, which is absolutely inspiring. That that's 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 pretty close to my second. A lot of the people who we interviewed, it's just been it's just been fantastic. It's just been really really great seeing seeing the people cope, how they cope if they're not coping, what they do in another time, you know. And they come up with new solutions for you guys to use and share as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, you, you don't know it all. Um, but every day is a school day for you guys as well, you know, so. Yeah. And for mental health, I mean, mental health is in itself. So, I mean, the whole the whole discipline is is barely 200 years old. Yeah. You know, it's an incredibly young science. Um, and we're still figuring stuff out, reinventing things. Um, you know, redefining things, discovering things. So it's it's you know we're baby steps at the moment. Yeah, I mean, you you obviously deal with a lot of um, uh, mental health issues like depression, anxiety, ADHD, and everything like that. But what about people that are are scared to go to a gig, or they don't have any friends that are into the same music at them, and they're too scared to go into like a venue and go into the gig? Would you reach out to these people as well? What would you What would you advise them to do? We did start to do. We've done a Facebook page. It's not been as successful as we'd hoped. Uh, we have got a, a Facebook page, which is uh, Heavy Metal Gigs. Um, and that's people wanting to meet up and and sort of go to the places, but it's not as much. And it, it's to be honest, we've had so much other stuff on that's kind of gone yeah. to the background. It's something I'd like to revisit because I I know what it's like. I've moved I moved town a lot, and the things that brought me to a town would be a climbing wall, somewhere to nerd out with war games, or you know some good good places to watch gigs. You know that's definitely my my three. If I can move somewhere, if they ain't got there, I ain't going there. So I know moving to a new place, seeing new people, it's it can be quite difficult yeah and especially when you've got sort of anxiety depression uh, anything else um that, that might be a barrier to that I, I went to my first gig by myself this year it's taken 41 years for me to do that i've never done that before and i did it sober as well which is is, is weird for me um and that's taken me all this all this all this knowledge mate and all, all this like knowing how it is so I, I respect how hard it is to do so it's like um, we were just talking about remember your successes well you've you've done it last week so you can go to a gig yourself next week if you wanted to. Yeah, exactly. And th- there is nothing wrong with going to a gig by yourself. No, absolutely it's, not. That's, it's absolutely fine. You don't. You don't actually have to enjoy it. That that's the cool <laughs> thing. Like, and, and that's uh, like a lot. One of the treatments is, is depression. Is doing stuff you should enjoy, um, but you don't because you're depressed. But then eventually you will start to enjoy it because you're doing it. So yeah, if you're listening, get out there. And and it's what's been nice is uh, I, there's a guy who was at that. I went to see Lama God, and there's a guy who's at that gig who I spoke to, 
And I've seen him at like two or three gigs. <laughs> yeah. I'll argue with that face, Ricky. Do you know what? There's other radio, there's other radio shows that we do, and uh, there's really one on a Monday up. night, and I've told them to ban Lamb of God as banned from the radio station. I just don't get them. Yeah. I don't get them. Oh, I'm okay. just better about them cancelling the Glasgow date. That's, I'm just a bit of oh. fun. <laughs> I have there's, seen there's, them. There's guys, seen I met, I, there's guys I met. There's guys I met at the time. Bumped into, and I was like, "Hi, I'm on my own." And that, that, that admitting it was quite, quite. I was outside, and I was just like, "Hi, I'm here by myself. What did you think to the gig?" Oh, mate. Again, by the end, we were <laughs> hugging and chatting, and um, yeah, that it's it, it really was an experience. I did not feel comfortable at the beginning. I didn't feel yeah. comfortable in the middle, uh, and I felt a bit more comfortable towards the end. But 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 doing it, I'd, I'd do it again. And there's, there's one or two people I, I I see them on the gig circuit now, and I'll sort of say hi and shake their hands and give them big sweaty mosh. It's great. <laughs> I mean, I was like yourself. Like I didn't have any friends who was into the music that I was into, so I was going to cat house myself, you know, or the venue as it was back in those days as well. And um. And then going to like death metal gigs, for example. But since I've been doing this, I've been talking to bands. So when I go to gigs now, band members talk to me, you know, and it just the elation that you feel, the happiness that you feel, you know. Um, I just absolutely love it. Absolutely love it now. And uh yeah, thanks guys. Thanks, guys. Um yeah, I've got so many questions to ask you. Do you know that? I just don't know if which, which one to ask you first. Yeah, give, um, give us a brutal one if you want, mate. Give us a brutal one. It's absolutely, that's absolutely fine. That's what we're, well, do you know we're what I'm going to and talking brutal honesty about mental health. So if, you, if you've got a hardball one, mate, throw it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to brag about somebody first um, it. because it was really um, himself that's kind of made this happen. His name's Tony Douglas. Um, but I'm, I kind of know the answer to this. But how are you guys spreading the word about heavy metal therapy? What... We've already talked about Bloodstock, but do you, what other uh, bigger festivals have you been to? Um, I take it you go to all the local rock and metal pubs as much as possible where you are, just to spread the word about heavy metal therapy. Yeah, uh, Matt's, Matt's something been, I you've been more on it than me. What, what have you been doing in Glasgow? Some, Go something I've been wanting to do in Scotland does bring heavy metal therapy more to Scotland because it is it's based more in England and it's kind of. I think as time's going on and if people are maybe seeing me and obviously you've mentioned Tony there who I'm incredibly grateful for what he's doing yeah. because he's helping a dream come true for me. I've, I've, I've spoke to Kate about this a lot and it's, I thought it's a pipe dream will never come true. I had this thing where we would have people in different cities in Scotland because I can't be everywhere as much as I'd love to be and it's amazing to see him get posters and stuff out because that, that's... I like doing the, the writing side of things. I'm not as into the sort of handing cards out and doing posters because I'm not extroverted that way. Like one gig in particular, you were involved in it, in fact, Ricky. Yeah, I was about uh, to talk about it. Was uh, that that was a fantastic gig, and that was the first time I ever gave cards to a stall. And I was in my head, I was thinking, no, no, I can't just walk up to the merch and not give them the cards. How can I do that? So I ran up and I was like, there's cards, ran away. <laughs> I was like, I can't do this. <laughs> it was, it, it's, it's an interesting experience because people don't, I've, I've got, sometimes I think you get wrapped up in your head but you think people care. It's like people don't care. They're, they are there to enjoy themselves. They're not there to look at you. They've paid to go to a gig. They've not paid to come and go, oh, look at that. He's tragic. He's on his own. It's like, they're, they're there to enjoy themselves. They're there for the same reason as me, which is something that I struggled with going to gigs on my own. And then I started going to gigs on my own. And I enjoy it as much as going to a gig with someone else now. So, and even more so, where I, a lot of the times if I'm away from Scotland and I gig, I'll, put, I'll wear a heavy metal therapy t-shirt, hoping that someone might notice it, might give us a follow, might ask me about it. It might, might be, spark a conversation. Yeah. Because it's... I know what it's like to go to a gig on, on my own. It's still quite nervous sometimes, standing in the queue. You don't know what to do. You've got no one to talk to. You're waiting for the band to come on. But then the band comes on and you get the payoff. And obviously, if someone asks you about heavy metal therapy or I get to spread the word, bonus, because I love this. Yeah, yeah. So I know that Tony's kind of concentrating in the Far East, isn't he? So have you got like a few places within Glasgow that you've been able to get your... Um, posters and merch out. I've given some. I've given cards a while ago to a record shop in Glasgow, and then I sort of fell off with it. Where 
my mental health, I was struggling and I just wasn't in a position that to go and do stuff like that. But now it's I'm I'm wanting to get as well as get the word out, hopefully get more people involved because it's it's nice me doing it and I love doing it, but I'd like to have a little community up here of us doing it where we yeah. can spread the word. Maybe even meet up and go to gigs. But yeah. It would just be nice to meet other metalheads because I know that before I got involved in this, I wanted a community of people like this. And I know there's people out there just like me looking for something like this. And they're the people I want to get to because I know they're going to get so much from this that to, just to see other people, not even the mental health side of it, just to be part of that community, being able to meet friends, go to gigs and do whatever. And it would be amazing to be a part of a community like that. So it's kind of, I think that the, the the sky is the limit for what we can do with stuff like that because it's sort Absolutely. of uncharted waters and unexplored territory. So it's 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 exciting to look forward and think, where is this going to go and what might happen? Because everything's just snowballed from me writing an article for them. Yeah. So everything that happens just snowballs and it's incredible to just sit and enjoy the ride sometimes. That's a great feeling, eh? Great feeling. Well, hopefully with the article, that'll write for Moshful Times to go along with the interview. Um, it might help spread the word and I'll certainly add a bit about it that anybody wants to join the team contact such and such so I'll certainly word it in that way um, are you going to the gig on Saturday up in Dundee? Uh, I, I didn't know there was one on who's playing? Well apparently I'm meeting Tony Douglas so I don't know whether that's a good thing or a bad thing yet <laughs> uh, that it's a Catalyst, a Catalysis album release show. So, uh, but it's a, it's an all day event up in Dundee. So, uh, I'm sure I'm sure Tony will bring some uh, like heavy metal therapy merch down. But the question I want to ask you, Ben, is see the shirt that you're wearing? Yeah. Does it have like so? It's got heavy metal therapy, obviously. Yeah. But does it have anything on the back like we can you can talk about? Yeah, it does. Ah, uh, that. Yeah, I was just wondering if there was like something. That describes what you can do in a nutshell on the back of your shirt or on or, or on merch, so people can know by looking at your shirt they know what heavy metal therapy is. Yeah, I mean, ultimately, if you if you kind of boil it down to the, the barest of bones, guys, um, we we are a community within community. We're, we're there to, to to collect stories, to make people aware, to bring people together, for people to contribute their stories to us. For and and we're, we're working towards a mission. To bring the metal community together and strengthen our resilience yeah um, not not just the mental health everything is social um so the you know you, you get to the point where you're at a gig you see someone else wearing the t-shirt or one of our patches or one of our mugs or other merchandise uh and you know be like i want to talk to them you know so I'm you've got everything talk. don't you you've got shirts you've got posters you've got pins you've got uh, the rubber bands as well what else would you have yeah, um, uh, we've got um, squishy brains. I've got one over there. In yeah, fact, it's like a stretch brains. ball. Really cool. <laughs> really cool too. But if if anyone does want to, you know, and and because uh, we've we've been doing sort of setting put trying to put stuff in situations that people will find relevant. So we've got our information in sort of bars and clubs and gig venues. We've got A&E's got a few, few GP surgeries. There's a police holding cell somewhere in the country with our stuff in, which I, I like the idea of. I kind of like that, you know. That's like, yeah. Cool. <laughs> Anywhere that people are like, you know, part of connected or might be struggling, um, you know, we, we want we want this this to be a position where people can can turn to us and, and, look at us and be like, you know, I, I need to know someone's going through this, what I'm going through. I need to get my head around this. Is anyone else going through this? And they are. I guarantee you, if, if you're listening, yeah. if you're watching, they are. And get that story and get the story from the context of our culture. From the culture, because every every moment is, is a culture in itself. We've got our own traditions, we've got our own values, we've got in the ways we dress. Um, you, you, you're part of us. You're one of us. We're all the same culture, so. and we're hoping to bring that culture together and talk a bit. Exactly, exactly. But that leads me nicely onto the next question. Then, but sometimes men find it difficult to talk about themselves due to the stigma that they perceive themselves as being weak to others when expressing their feelings. What can you say to men who feel that way? Um. Can I quote Machine Head? Build I'll let you away with that one. They're okay. I'll let you away break them <laughs> all down. It's up to you. It's up to you. You've got to. You've got to. You've got to. You've got to break it down. You got to break it down. Like what you're going through is terrible because it's you. 
Other people yeah. care about you. If you don't think they are, that's because your brain meat is telling you they're not. And your brain meat is a little bit of a liar when you're depressed. Yeah. yeah. You can't watch those thoughts. You do mean something to someone, I guarantee. Yeah. And it's I think with, with the cost of living crisis the way it is as is, is well just now, like going to seek professional counselling when it's like CBTs, like between 40 and 80 pounds a session, nobody can afford that anymore. So having a resource like yourselves, which is free and um, so helpful, um, I just if, if you are if you are in I'm not sure it extends to Scotland, but we do. I know in England we have the IAP service, which is CBT counselling. Counselling is cheap; it's not free. Um, there is a waiting list, of course. Yeah. Um, you know, and and you know, so you, which is why it's really important to get get it early, guys. Like especially you men. Like we, we, I, I've been the same. You you wait till it's so bad that. Yeah. You can't get to work. That's the point that we usually, <laughs> that's the point where we're like, we need help. It's not when we can't sleep or we're suffering or we're enjoying anything. It's when we can't get to work. Get it before that point. Yeah. yeah. Seek help. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's well, it. there's Early even the on top of three, a free counselling, I think is a, I think it's called Uproar, or Uproar or Mental Health Foundation. And they do every Tuesday, they do free online group counselling. So it's, there are resources. There is things out there. They're, I don't. I, they're not widely advertised. Some of these things. I know uproar are getting out there, and it's. I think that's absolutely fantastic what they're doing. That yeah. they're offering free group counselling because counselling can be very expensive. And I think if you're on the lower rungs of that ladder, it can feel you can feel like you're drowning because yeah, yeah. Sometimes getting help is hard. Asking for help is hard enough, and then it's when you ask for help and you get barriers put in your way, which is sort of what I love about what we do obviously we're not I'm not a mental health professional I don't have a background in mental health at all I, anything I've learned has been through probably about the past two two and a half years of experience with even getting involved with I, like when I went to Bloodstock and getting to work with Ben Kate who are I have a background in mental health and it's I can get, get take things from them and learn from them. Like I get a lot from them, and I think these are people that bring the best out in me. And I think it's even sometimes finding your tribe or find people that are going to bring the best out in you, people that want to see you do well, because everything that I have done has been as a direct result of getting involved in heavy metal therapy, and then it all snowballed from there. Yeah, It's things that I've, I've been able to do because of that people I've met because of that, connections I've made because of that, even like Tony getting involved in heavy metal therapy, that happened, I was really struggling with my mental health and I'd come off of social media and uh, Kate had reached out to me and said, we've got somebody in Scotland we'd like you to reach out to when you're ready and then when I got back on, I reached straight out to him and Tony has been, uh, Tony is a fantastic asset to us, he's absolutely brilliant, he's got connections that I could only dream of having, he, he got us to you Ricky, and something that I wanted to actually get us involved with Moshville sometime, and I'd come up to it against a brick wall, because I thought, I don't know how to pitch this, and I don't know how to do it. So I can't thank him enough for making this happen, because the minute I seen Moshville, I thought, we've there's possibly a mutual beneficial here, because Absolutely. we can spread the word for each other. And I thought it's, it could be... I, didn't, I, I never thought it would be a chat. I thought it would be an article or something, but... It's, it's just, even these things, it's, uh, my thing is uh, tell people say yes to everything because it's some of the weirdest and amazing, most wonderful and amazing things in my life have happened because somebody asked me something that terrified me and I just said yes. <laughs> and it's just, if you, if, I mean, if you met me two years ago, I would never have dreamt of doing something like this. I would never have been terrified to do something like this. I would have been there's not a chance I would have done, I've done something like this and what, what, it's all your, thanks to your, getting to work with heavy metal your, therapy one of your turning points this is actually how I met Matt we, I interviewed him for the church heavy metal um, plug plug um, is, is you were talking about blogging and writing weren't you and I, I think if if you are experiencing mental health problems for the first time you're not sure you're doing, I think that's a wonderful thing to do like account, counselling often just helps you reframe your thoughts yeah. you know, once they come out they become real once they become real you can deal with them yeah, you can't deal with them back around it. They need to come out somewhere. And, you know, Matt, you've, you've, you've found, I've, I've read your stuff. It's fantastic because it's true. Well, and, even earlier on this year, that free. thing that me and Kate got published in Mad in America because Kate asked me to help her out. And then we ended up getting that published. And 
that's a big mental health blog in America. And to get pub to, for someone like me to get published in that was absolutely mind blown. And then over ten thousand people read it, which was incredibly overwhelming wow. because I'm on those pages. That's that there's it's me. That's your and history. A lot Can't of be my changed. story. Yeah, and it was just your truth. That was it. That's wasn't it. it? That could be mm-hmm. anyone's truth. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, that actually leads me to the very important point of um, being involved with a charity and mental health. How do you look after yourselves when you get private messages from people, maybe if it's suicidal thoughts or if, if it's something that you've went through is it, and it resonates with you and it might bring your triggers back? How do you look after yourself and how do you look after one another within the team? I, I, some, I have a weird, weird combination of PTSD and depression, which is relatively common. So um, I, f- I find doing stuff helps, you know, being active, so that helps my PTSD, but then depression just kicks the motivation out of that. So yeah, I, like, like I was saying before, I, there's certain things I have to do routinely. Uh, yeah. And if I do those routinely, um, like, like eat properly, exercise, keep contact with people, do work like this, um, you know, and, and sort of do my breathing exercises. I find I, I can actually be really resilient. Yeah. Sometimes I'll get, I'll I'll see or, or read something or talk to someone who is just is just me a few years ago. That that's that is hard. Yeah. Um, but just being curious is the best way to do that, because someone's journey, no matter how similar to mine, is not mine. Yeah. And um, th- th- this is something I was very guilty of when I was when I was a, a, doing sort of more like therapy and nurses. You start to make assumptions, and I, actually, when you kind of get to it and start asking people questions, it's, it starts to how different it starts to peel. How it is sitting back and just asking people questions. And if you're ever talking to them about their mental health, guys, this is the best way to do. Just be really curious. Be a little kid. Why? Why? What's that like? You know, it, it's it's like be be like that annoying little six year old who wants to know everything because honestly, it'll do you some good. It'll do do them some good. Um, but sort of failing that, sometimes I just, sometimes I have a meltdown to be honest, mate, and that's perfectly okay. Sometimes I'll just collapse and just not be myself for a while, and it happens. If you have mental health problems for long enough, the people yeah. around you, um, and that can include things like your employers get to know my boss knows what i'm like when i'm when i'm getting bad and he gives me a little bit of space and he asks me what he needs and it's accepting sometimes things are going to trigger you but do what you can you know to keep your head above water so that you will get the trigger but you know it, it yeah. won't be as bad that's the best best advice i could give anyone yeah is, is keep at it keep doing the things that make you well listen to metal <laughs> can't argue with that can't argue with that and i thank you for being open it's not open and honest um but what about yourself Mal? what if um and some of the some of the charities that you deal with or somebody's contacted you through heavy metal therapy and it's it just it stays in your head how do you make sure that you're okay do you do you have like um weekly sessions with each other or something like that where you can talk about things and get get it out your system or what do you do I think something that I'm very fortunate and grateful to be in the position of is I've got people like Ben in my life that I've been in that background professionally that if I'm really struggling, I can reach out and they'll give me some space, which I'm incredibly grateful for. And I say not just Ben, but in the different things I've got involved with, I know I've got people I can turn to if I'm really struggling that are going to give me space as well as I, I journal a lot. I, I enjoy journaling. I like that's kind of how I get my thoughts uh, together. I know big, big, scary metalhead, and I like sitting. And that, there's nothing I like. Listen, it's a huge CBT tool. It's a it's, huge CBT. It. You know, it's something I, I. It's not even just that. I think it's a great tool. I enjoy it. I like yeah. doing it. I yeah. don't usually read back. I don't do it to keep records. I just enjoy it. It's something that you you can kill even five ten minutes. You you don't have to put any effort. It doesn't take any time at all, and it's I enjoy it. It's I get a lot from it. It gives gives me back something, and it's something that I would recommend to, to anyone that's struggling to give it a go. Even if it doesn't work for you, there will be something else out there for you. Some people exercise. Some people listen to music. Some people play music. Some people write. Obviously, I like writing. It's uh, I sometimes write to make myself feel better, and actually. 
You ever written a song? Article. Well, funny you should mention that. Another <laughs> group that we're involved with is some not involved with, but we sort of loosely partnered with is something called the Noisy Brain. And I can't play music, so but I've written stuff that I sort of viewed as lyrics. And what Stu set this up for is that you can put your writing onto this platform and songwriters can go onto this platform and adopt your writing and turn it into a song. Wow. So it's quite amazing that that can happen and it's amazing to be involved in something like that. And it's not just, none of mine have ever been adopted and if they do, they do. If they don't, they don't. That's kind of, I just enjoy having a platform to put my writing out because for a long time it was something that was in my phone notes. That to other people it might not make any sense to, but to me it makes a lot of sense because it helped me get through a period of my life sometime where I could go back and read through stuff I wrote maybe two years ago. And it's can I can sort of transport myself back to that headspace. What was I thinking then? What was I doing? What was I eating? What was I thinking about? What was I wanting to do? Who was I talking to? Was I, was I at work? Was I on holiday? And it's, I think that's the power of music and the power of writing is incredible because something I don't like doing with my writing if, when I ever put it out is telling someone what it means straight away. Because I think the minute you tell someone what it means, that's it. It's the whole point of it's ruined because you everyone listens to a song. Mm. Exactly. Everyone listens to a song and it'll connect to you with whatever you're feeling in that yeah. moment and it'll mean something different to everyone which is something I love about music. It's such an individual experience that a song you could listen to and it could mean something totally different between me and you, but we'll both love the song, but for different reasons. And I love that about music. It's it's just, it's just incredible that I yeah. don't know anything else that can do that. I'm not really into art. If I go to an art gallery, I'm bored stiff. I feel quite guilty about it sometimes. I'm just looking, looking I'm thinking, yep. Okay, been here ten minutes. Let's go. I'm bored now, which is <laughs> my mind wanders, and maybe that's part of. Is there ADHD a particular song that you would go always go back to? That's quite a good question, actually. Well, there's a song. I suppose the song that I ended up getting involved with heavy metal therapy was Tremonti, "Marching in Time," and from the first time I heard that song, to if I was to listen to it now. It's a song that means a lot to me. It's a song that I find a lot of comfort in, something I can turn to when I'm feeling low. I can listen to it when I feel good. I can listen to it with friends. I've recommended it to people. It's, it's That's a song I've turned to quite a lot because I think there's a lot of hope and a lot of light in that song. So if I'm feeling particularly down, it's listening to that song, paying attention to the lyrics and how I interpret it. And it, I just feel myself slowly coming back up and it's this amazing feeling it's like somebody's gave you a life jacket and they've inflated it and all you're starting to float back to the surface and yeah it's an indescribable feeling but it is just incredible what music can do one of these days you're actually going to talk, talk about good music um good bands um but i saw you ben you're kind of looking around saying oh shit don't ask me don't ask me don't ask me let me think on quick 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 no 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 i'm not going to ask you you. Say, you just ain't gonna like the answer ricky <laughs> <laughs> better not be lamb of god <laughs> um no 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 I've, i also also remember that i've miscapitated their plane tonight but i had my daughter so i couldn't have seen them they're playing in norwich uh talking about death metal so um no i i um machine head um blood sweat and tears it's, it's not not from the best album it's not even from the best song the best album on their album but I, yeah. I really love it the song's about the first half of the song is about hating yourself and just being this creature of loathing and and just uh, just hating yourself hating other people and then like the mid song bridge is about just breaking down the walls and just accepting help from other people, accepting you, who, who you are. Um, and, and just like accepting that think something's wrong and that you need help and then making the steps towards it. That's what the whole song's about. And it's also kicking. It's a fantastic song. Like I had a horrible, <laughs> yeah, I've had a horrible week and a, and a half. I really have. And it came on my shuffle list, uh, this morning, just as I pulled up to work. And I just like sat back and just kicked my feet up on, on the deck of my van and just listened to it. And I just walked in and I was just like, I have got this day. <laughs> this day is mine. You know, it's just every time it does it to me. It's like a little dose of medication, mate. That's amazing, isn't it? Absolutely amazing. Do the thing. 
Listen, guys, I really appreciate your time. I appreciate your honesty and your openness and uh, your friendliness as well. I thought you'd have been really horrible guys, but you're really quite nice and approachable. Um, either that or it's just an act. Um, <laughs> but you've done, you've won me over. Um, but I'm going to make a complaint now. I've done all the nice stuff. I'm making a complaint. Go. Um, but I really like your YouTube channel. I subscribe to it as well, uh, where you have people happily talking and sharing their experiences about mental health. For example, the guy on um, ADHD. But sorry to say this, though, but I think you need to do more on YouTube and have uh, more people sharing their experience. I, th I think the last one was like eight to ten months ago. I like doing my research for my prep, and it was one thing I noticed that you hadn't uh, done anything on YouTube in some time. No, we haven't. Uh, we should have. Um, I interviewed someone about using uh, death metal style screaming to manage PTSD. That should actually drop this weekend. Oh, he watched um, that. Yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Um, yeah, absolutely phenomenal woman, we'll Christina. It's like, um, and just happened. We have, we're going to the same gig next year. We're all going to go see Glory Hammond, Beast in Black. So I'm going to go hang out there as well. <laughs> um, but yeah, a great story about using that. And no, you're absolutely right. I think with a lot of the festivals, with a lot of things, a lot of other stuff go on. <clears throat> um, we've actually felt, Ricky, that we've we have strayed away from the mission a little bit. Which that was something me and you talked about then, yeah. wasn't it? That Bloods yeah. thought we were going to do video diaries or something. Yeah, yeah. Like so we 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 are trying to get back back on back on that. Um, no, you're absolutely absolutely right because I think that it's 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 really good and it's out there on YouTube as well, which is like the best place for it, isn't it? Like, absolutely, it's, it's so easy to find. Um, yeah. But yeah, so ho hopefully get some some more interesting ones as, as time goes by. And uh, like we say. Um, Dear listener and watching, um, if you do have any kind of stories you want to share, if you've ever, if you found a way to sort of cope with mental health, make yourself more resilient, um, that's something like other people could do, other people could try. Like I say, this is the whole thing's a tap ass at the moment. Try what you like, stick with what you want. <laughs> um, you know, come forward, contact us. I'll, I'll, I'll happily chat to you about it. Again, I will put that in the article that I'll write along with this um, interview, um, how easily contactable you guys are. And um, if they're willing to share their stories, then that'll be a platform. Um, can change their name if they want to, or just whatever they want to do. You guys can make it happen. Um, but what also, like, as we talked about it very, very briefly earlier on, was the um, all the various forms of mental health issues, but you've got a playlist to, to, to coincide with these. And what I like about your playlist is uh, you've got everything from Prodigy to Killing Joke to Cattle Decapitation. Um so, Matt, what are we going to do with your shit musical tastes, I'm afraid? <laughs> Get, listen, listen to the playlist a bit more, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> no, I like um, how easy or difficult do you find it to create these playlists? I don't do them because I actually find it really hard. I say we've got another volunteer who kind of does it, who collects them there. Because I, I, for what, for what I get, I get that almost like I'm a bit too scared to tell people what I'm into because it's it's like my my my. Well, you've got better taste than that. <laughs> my I, I span many genres of metal. I am a genre spanner, so um, I just like all sorts. I'll listen to yeah. anything. If anybody wants so, to send me anything, I'll give it a go. Yeah. So we we've and we we've had some wonderful, generally a lot of younger people who've who've kind of got involved, well, made suggestions, and collaborated it. We at one point when metalcore kind of dropped, kind of formed itself as a solid genre. We even had a chief metalcore kind of uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky doesn't like it, Uh Yeah, we, we like consultant. We had someone who would like every every so often just be like, and I think they still they, they, they still do sort of like, hey, it's Monday, it's Metalcore Monday. Listen to this, <laughs> it's great. So um, yeah, we we are Metalcore like, Monday, Ben. It's a it's a new it's a new single every Monday. It's a, yeah. a from a band that's released a single that week, which is yeah. kind of cool. Yeah, yeah. I think you've also got like a it's a female. She does on a Wednesday. She does like a, a counselling session on a Wednesday type thing, but she makes it kind of, she puts like the, the face on. I've seen this. I've seen this. Well, I was doing it in my prep and it's, I saw her. I can't <laughs> oh, remember. She does it on a Wednesday. Yeah, the corpse fight, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. And we, we, we do like little, we do like seasonal stuff as well. So it's, uh, we, I went down for a while. We dismember. Dismember December. I'm not sure what we're doing this year. We might we might recall it Gothmas, um, but it, the idea was that those people people who feel on the outside of like more generic kind of 
um, Pop and Love Island society, uh, a, a lot of the guys that goes, don't feel great around December. Like it, it doesn't really yeah. feel like our culture. So what we did is we did the last two years now, we wore corpse paint and did everyday Christmas stuff. So <laughs> there's pictures of me going like Christmas shopping with my trolley and <laughs> sort of full corpse paint. There's someone like riding a horse in full corpse paint. There's someone <laughs> doing a gym session in full corpse paint, you know, just, just as a bit of a, you know, we're here, we're here. This isn't, you know. Did you ever wonder like why bands go through the torture putting corpse paint on every night? Pain in the arse. And, <laughs> and you come out of spots every freaking time, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Cool, cool. But listen, um, I've had a fabulous time talking to you guys. I really was nervous about this one, um, but this is usually oh. stage, the time of the interview where I ask uh, about the instruments that you used um, and the <laughs> development of the, the, no, like it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys because uh, it brings a wee bit out in me as well. I wish I did go continue with the counselling, um, but it's just one of those things you let it slip. Um, but it's obviously you can go back to it, but it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you guys. So, Heavy Metal Therapy, we talked about the website. Where else can we find Heavy Metal Therapy? So there's the Mental Health Mosh Pit, which is on Facebook, which is mostly memes. Uh, it's where we share a little bit of love. Um, people are welcome. They can do this anonymously if they want. Um, on that, if you're struggling with something, you can type in. As long as it's within parameters yeah. kind of parameters don't get yeah. us banned from facebook please yeah um you know uh, people will chip in and say this has worked for me that's another option that's mental health mosh pit um we are of course on twitter as well um we do have our more generic kind of business if you like sort of page that's on facebook as well so yeah you, you can kind of kind of reach us through that i, I love the mental health mosh pit i absolutely love i think that's really great so it's if people share memes we we do different different ones like we do cat a day which we like heavy metal cats which is really common really <laughs> common <laughs> like what the hell guys? um you know uh, uh, tuesdays are woos days got dogs you know it's stuff to perk you up stuff you wake up in the yeah. morning and you're just like oh jesus christ i can't face today but you see a funny meme about glenn danzig or something like that and you know <laughs> david, david oh. mustaine being david mustaine you know and then yeah it's it's yeah, yeah that's that's what we do bring a little bit of humor to it as well cool the metal health mosh pit's actually how me and ben ended up first chatting. Like the only person I'd really spoken to was Kate and I didn't really know anyone else from it and it was I'd posted because I'd, I'd, I don't drink anymore. I've been sober for a long time now and I'd posted something about if anybody ever wants support and you want someone to talk to, you can mm. come to me if you want. And Ben reached out for a bit of support, which I ended up actually really respected because I thought that takes a lot of balls to message yeah. someone you don't know and say, can you give me some guide, advice or guidance on this? And it's kind of, I can only say what worked for me. I'm not a, not a professional. I'm not, I'm an expert in what worked for me, which is something Ben actually said to me. But it's... <laughs> he actually it's, listens, Ben. He listens. Oh, right. Sure. I, oh, that, it's the, I'm surprised at some of the stuff I pick up. and I'm like, Where did that come from? I'm like, I definitely didn't say that. But who, who, who said that? <laughs> and it's, it's quite incredible, the community we've got in the Mosh Pit. Because some people just join it and don't post they just like or they look at stuff and they'll laugh at the memes or whatever but it's just being part of that community which yeah. is incredible it's to, because we've got people from all over the world in that group it's not yeah. a massive group but i think it will grow and yeah. it's obviously something that we'd, I, I would have loved to see is gig meetups where you could say or i could say i'm going down to london who wants to go to this gig in london and then be able to meet up with people because I think that would just be incredible yeah. and you, you you never know who you get to meet with these things it's a very incredible experience and how small the world is with I think social media gets a bad rep everybody thinks it's terrible and it's like without social media I would never have done any of this Absolutely. so I'm reluctant to hate I've on it met so many amazing weirdos on social media I was going to say I hope you're not going to meet any serial killers down at these gigs that you're going to meet <laughs> People that you've never met before, but we um, certainly hope not. <laughs> no, no, no. Um, but yeah, is there anybody that you want to give a, a shout out in the team? Do you guys get together for like a yearly reunion somewhere, or what do you do? Yeah, I guess uh, Wolverhampton, um, 
primordial radio AGM tends to be ours because it's it's the centre of the country. Sorry, my country, not yours. Uh, so a little bit further. A bit from personal there, yeah. Ben. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so it's, 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 it's central of England, so it's a good place for everyone to kind of meet in the middle. Matt has to come a little bit further, a bit further. <laughs> Bless you. Um, so that tends to be our sort of annual meet up because um, I I've still got friends and I used to live in Sheffield. So when the other family members all live in Sheffield, I try and meet up whenever I can with those. Um, we meet up like online when we can, but. Yeah, so the primordial a AGM tends to be really good. Primordial radio have been really supportive, um, and they're really supportive, like say, for Lancaster Foundation, Melt for Good. Um, it's it's a real nice mesh of music, but also helping kind of bringing the community together. So we tend to sort of meet up for that, or as and when we can. Um, I'm probably going to come to Edinburgh again, Matt. So we'll have to go I'll have to see what the gigs on, mate. Yeah, I, I, I came and we did we did a cultural exchange. I went to Edinburgh, Matt, sort of only Matt ain't far from Glasgow, is it? So he came and met me to watch the gig. <laughs> So, which is, I, I wouldn't have done that if it wasn't for this. I wouldn't have, wouldn't have met this, this gentleman and, and seen his people. So, yeah, so we, we kind of try and meet up when we can. And um, <laughs> when we start doing the groups, who knows what's going to happen then? Who I think Primordial was definitely, that was the first one I ever done, mm -hmm. where I went down to go to the stall with all these people I'd never met, all I knew one of them. And then Ben, the first thing he did when he seen me was give me a big hug. And Ben's quite significantly taller than me. so. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, that was just another occasion where it's getting to communicate with people that some people do know about this, some people don't know about this, some people see the stall, want to come up and know what about. Some people just, some people don't like metal and want to come up and ask what, what it's about. I, I remember when we wrote the article for Mad in America, I'd find me that don't like metal at all and said kind of said it's amazing what metal gives you and understood what i got from it which meant a lot because it it was meant i'd done my job i'd put done something on the page that explained that to someone else it's like this is what metal music has given me not just me it's like Absolutely. you've got bloodstock you've got download you've got arc tangent where you've got these festivals where metalhead thousands upon thousands of metalheads go every year to go and if we if you don't go to these things they don't happen so as you're part of a community of people that fill these venues because yeah. without us going to these gigs they don't happen Absolutely. and it is quite amazing that when you sort of step back and sometimes sometimes it gigs where you sort of step back have a look about the room and you think without people like us going you know this doesn't happen and it's quite amazing but especially when a band acknowledges that and treats their fans and their crowd well because it's i think some bands seem to forget you are there because we put you there you didn't bring us here we brought you here you're here because we're a fan of your music you're here because we've bought tickets it's not the other way about the fans give them the most amazing life ever where they get to tour the world and play these amazing places to amazing crowds and i, I think there's not there's nothing more satisfying then when a band recognises that and brings the fans in to make you feel a part of it because it's all a big a big circle. It's we're all part of the same community and a lot of the a lot of bands started as fans. They are Absolutely. still just fans of music. And it's it's just an incredible thing to be a part of, especially I, th I think sometimes a lot of the times I've not I've neglected I've wanted to get to know Scottish bands more. And it's amazing to get to see some Scottish bands do well, even to see a band bleed from within that are from Glasgow get to go on a tour support and Slipknot. It's amazing to see bands from Glasgow, from where I'm from, go and do these amazing things because the world is a small place. And it's great to see the Scottish metal community getting out there because there are some fantastic bands coming out of Scotland. And I think sometimes we don't get the acknowledgement we deserve. Absolutely. I said that about, I just reviewed the Catalysis. I don't review albums anymore. It would take something special. But I got the Catalysis album and um, I said they're flying the, the flag of Scottish metal. Um, and I, I, I think it's on a huge high at the moment. The scene up here in Scotland in the last couple of years, I can't remember it being so good. Um, so, but yeah. I think Metal uh, to the Masses and Bloodstock's got a lot to do with that as well, where they... That's, that's something that before I'd went to Bloodstock, I loved that they've got this stage where they get bands up and down the country that get to go and have a chance to play a stage. And I love that you get to see these little bands play this big, massive festival. 
And yeah. I think that's a key thing about Bloodstock. The Bloodstock is for the fans, by the fans, I think. So it's yeah. Yeah. incredible to see that. Yeah. But we've just had a wee message there, um, and I think that's a good time to, to end the interview. Um, I will edit the video um, over the next day or so, and hopefully I'll have the article out for the weekend. Help spread the word about heavy metal therapy. Matt, you can send me links of all your, your Facebook pages and stuff like that, and we'll, we'll, we'll work together and we'll help spread the word that there are people out there that are willing to listen to um, anybody that has uh, a mental health issue. So absolute pleasure talking to you guys. And uh, I know it won't be the last time either. Yeah, I've just got to give a big shout out to Tony Douglas because yeah. he made this happen. Yeah, just, uh, absolutely. The weird and wonderful way that this world of mine has become small, he's made this happen. And we wouldn't, I wouldn't be doing this without this amazing community. So thanks, yeah. Tony. And thank you, Ricky, for giving us this platform. Yeah, thank you, mate. No worries at all. Absolutely. No worries at all. Thanks very much, guys. Thank you. Take care. Bye.